We've got Sandra Smith, co-anchor of America Reports on Fox News, and Charles Payne, anchor of Making Money with Charles Payne, right here on Fox Business. I almost introduced them before. We almost started <laughs> okay. a riff, but you never know what's going to happen on live TV. Um, first point, it's kind of cool. We were talking about this amongst ourselves. So BP is pulling out of the Russian oil company. Shell is pulling out of the Russian oil company. Sandra Smith, you have a laundry list. The private sector, let me get this right, the private companies are engineering secondary boycotts against Amazing. Russian oil and gas before the gov our government has a primary uh, sanction. Is that fair? Well, Will, we, we are still buying 670,000 barrels a day from Russia. These private companies are saying, okay, so if you're not going to cut off the payments to Russia, we will. The private sector is taking this into their own hands. BP led the way. Shell followed on Monday. Uh, Total Energies SE, Equinor, ASA followed. And then the car companies now. Uh, you've got Volvo saying it's halting business altogether in Russia. GM says it's suspending vehicle exports to Russia until further notice. Uh, Daimler, uh, the German truck maker, is on board. Mercedes-Benz mm. is joining. This is amazing to see the private sector say, if you're not going to cut them off, we will. Why is it that we've got bars and restaurants around the country right now pouring Russian-made vodka down <laughs> the sewers and the drains, Larry, but yet we continue to keep the oil flowing from that country? Well, you know, ours. but this stuff, so Charles, um, one of my former NEC staff now working on the Hill said they're getting reports. One of the Russian oil companies in the Urals Okay, that actually supplies to the Northeast. Our, meaning U.S., refiners will not take delivery. Right. And lending banks, Charles, will not finance the inventory. It's another example of a secondary boycott. They're not even waiting for Mr. Biden or anybody else. Yeah, and this is, uh, you know, I, I, right, waiting in agreement room, I heard uh, Brett Barrett uh, talking about the lunch he had with President Biden today, him and uh, other journalists. And, you know, he, he thinks that he's going to start tonight talking about Ukraine and taking a victory lap for uniting the world. Let's be honest, this is all about President Zelensky. And I think it was that message he made to EU leaders that triggered Germany. And you heard KT, uh, KT uh, say, say that that was the major turning point. For Germany to go against their constitution, to say we're going to send lethal weapons, we're going to open up LNG terminals, and then for a company like BP to say we're going to take a $25 billion hit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? After that, everyone came in. That, that broke it. That was the ultimate domino. When those fell, broke the every, yeah, everyone, all of them fell. Um, Zelensky is Putin's worst nightmare. And, and I, you know, God bless him, Zelensky. Um, I don't need transportation. I need ammo. Yeah. I'm I don't need a ride. <laughs> I'm, speaking, I'm speaking to the European Parliament from a bunker in Ukraine, in Kiev. He's not leaving. That's leadership. That's guts. That's courage. That's character. That's everything that Vladimir Putin doesn't have. Robert O'Brien was just on with Martha McCallum and said, we are witnessing, this is a living legend watching him. And because of his leadership is the reason why you're seeing all these individual stories of Ukrainian civilians on the ground so willing to fight because they know their leaders on the front line. That's leadership. And I think the world is taking notice. Tonight's going to be re very interesting because all eyes are going to be on our president because this is no longer, as somebody said during my, my last hour, uh, this is no longer an address to the nation. This is an address to the world in this moment as we see Zelensky, as we see Putin. Uh, president Biden's going to stand up there and he's going to have to address why we have put ourselves into a situation that was much different, Larry Kudlow, just a few years ago. Indeed. When you look at energy as the center of all of this, mm -hmm. that those oil sales continue to line the pockets of Vladimir yeah. Putin. Every time we buy a barrel of oil, you are lining the pocket of Vladimir Putin. Including the 500,000 that come to the United States. Correct. 500,000 I don't know. Chuck Schumer just said a second ago, that's just a little bit. No, it is not. That is a significant amount more uh, amount of more sure. oil that we're buying from Russia than we were just a couple of years Last ago. Last May, we bought 26 million barrels. That was a record for a month, okay? And just a couple of years earlier, we were buying maybe 10 million. So what's ironic, though, to your point, mm -hmm. is he's going to actually double down on this. Mm -hmm. He's going to tell us tonight, no, we got to double down on this climate change agenda. Right. Uh, it's going to cost a lot of money. But mm -hmm. And here's the thing. To announce today 
that they're going to release 60 million barrels. We're yeah, going to release 30 million. How'd that work today, Charles? How'd it that work? backfired miserably. Really? Oil skyrocketed. Really? I mean, it's crazy that they thought it's an emergency supply. So if you keep tapping it, what are you telling the world? It's an emergency, and I have no clue how to handle it. Call, your, call the American producers and say, guys, turn on the spigots. But he'll do it with a straight face. You'll hear about it tonight, more tonight. Look, um, Sandra, I, I don't want to be overly biased. I have my own views about Putin. Everybody's got their own views and their own views about Biden. But look, is it fair to say, as a reporter, is it fair to sure. say, really every poll shows that the country is not buying the product that Mr. Biden is selling. I have them in front Seriously. of me. Seriously. <laughs> Listed I mean, one after another. His overall approval rating. I'm saying rating, this empirically. Heading into tonight, 37% is his overall approval rating. When asked, is Joe Biden a strong leader? Fox News polling shows 61% say no. Sorry, 36% say yes, 61% say no. That's only gone up during his presidency. Does Biden have mental soundness to serve effectively as president? That is at the highest level of his presidency, 53% say no. People don't like what he is selling. They don't like the way he is acting. Can I just say one other thing, by the way? Because Mitch McConnell suggested that what the president needs to do tonight is announce some sort of significant change to policy, whether it's energy policy or otherwise. I don't think anybody's holding their breath out for that. But Jen Psaki this morning, I could not. I actually she thought of you when I heard Jen Psaki <laughs> say this. She said, by the way, the Keystone Pipeline, that would take years. Mm. That would take years. Yeah. Well, what are we talking about with green energy, yeah. by the way? Yeah. And isn't it the job of the administration to look out into the future and prepare us for a better national security situation? And then she keeps putting out there this talking point on oil leases, that the oil leases right now, oh, there are 9,000 approved nonsense. oil leases. That is total nonsense. nonsense. Because who in this environment would trust the administration wouldn't change the rules of the game in the middle right. of tapping into that? And, right. and the Interior Department will not permit any pipelines, nor will the EPA, nor will the Energy Department. In fact, the Energy Department, Jennifer Granholm, former governor of Michigan, She's sitting on six applications, six applications for LNG export, terminals, equipment, and pipelines, and she won't do it. So, of course, they're not going to invest. Charles, um, how's this going to work in the stock market and the economy? I, I want to pick your you brain. You know, I, the moment, market actually, the last few days, uh, suggests that it's oversold. You know, I mean, but the headlines, to give you an example, the futures this morning were up until 2 o'clock, and a headline came out of Ukraine. Uh, from Russia, and it immediately went down. So we're certainly headline driven right now. But, you know, there's, there's this thing about the connection between Main Street and Wall Street. There's a connection, particularly when it comes to, uh, you know, how we feel our confidence. You know, that's extremely important. It doesn't matter day to day per se, but I'm really worried, and we had this discussion yesterday. I do feel like the nation is slipping into a Jimmy Carter like malaise. Mm. And, I, and, I, and I wish that the president would listen. Instead, it's our fault. We're not listening. He's done an amazing job. He's going to brag tonight. He's going to brag mm. to people who are barely paying their grocery bills. He's going to brag how great of a job he's doing. About a that 10%. Doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't get people to go out to spend money, rate. start businesses, and the kind of things that, by the way, we were doing really well with all this stuff, and it's going to come to a screeching halt, I think. I'm worried about it coming to a You're screeching halt. You're always an optimist, though. I am. I am. That's why I said I'm worried about it, and because me, it's an option, but it doesn't have to yeah, happen. I mean, you know, it's, it's, and you're the optimist. The cavalry's yeah. coming. <laughs> the thing about the midterm your, elections about your polls, very important. Yep. Which makes me breathe easier. If if Biden had 65 percent, I'd be really worried. <laughs> but he doesn't. He has 30, yeah. 35 yeah. percent. That gives me a lot of hope that the cavalry is in fact the country is rejecting big government socialism and all these related policies. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of common sense. Charles, people don't want big government socialism. People know a job is a good thing. A private company creates a job. That the best welfare program is a good paying job from a business. To really, that point, I, you know what I, I knew the tide was turning? Thought. Last year, right after, they, after we had the uh, almost $2 trillion of uh, uh, COVID relief mm -hmm. and the, the other uh, bills were on the drawing board, polls started coming. And I'm talking polls like the Washington Post, uh, NBC, where people were saying another round of free money would hurt me. That's yeah, what people right. are saying That's in the right. polls. It changed. Another right. round right. of free money would hurt my family. I, know, I love that. Whoever thought we'd come to that point. So last point, Sandra. What's the difference between a dollar and a ruler? <laughs> you got me on that. It's a, a dollar. dollar. She's screaming at us. I love it. I love it. Sandra Smith <laughs> Thanks for and having Charles us. Payne, you are wonderful. See you, you later. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. <laughs>